Hey I'm Max and welcome to my idle game tutorial. In this tutorial at the end we should have this result right here which includes a updating graph that updates every 10 seconds with the new dollars that you have, different coins that you can buy and sell that changes price randomly and that gives you an interest based on how many you own. So for example this one I have 22 now and every 10 seconds it gives me interest based on that and shows in my wallet. And also random powers that you can buy for a lot of money that I don't have right now that makes everything go up and you can do other powers too. So this is mostly a UI and math kind of a tutorial. There's a lot of math involved but I'm sure you can learn a lot of things that can be very useful to you. You can of course change a few things like the team instead of making it crypto you can make it something different like cookies and have a different style where the price don't change randomly but instead increase every time you buy one kind of like cookie clicker or, or you can modify it however you feel to make your own custom idle game. In my case I'll use crypto as the team and I set up kind of a, a large plan here. I'm not sure how much I'll follow that plan and how much I'll deviate from it but that's the plan so far. And also you can do just like me in the tutorial which is the crypto style or you can do a different team if you want. Okay so here I have my Unity open with a fresh 2D project. If you don't have Unity installed or you don't know how to create a project you can check out my video on how to install Unity and create a project. So just create a 2D project and you should have this here. I'm just going to rename the scene to game because I don't like having the name sample scene but it doesn't matter. We're only going to use one scene. Then I'll go into my assets, create a folder for my sprites. And I will drag into it some basic sprites that I made. I'll put them in the description if you want, but honestly you should go get some better looking ones. I think I'll make the old game on UI so it's easier to scale with screen size and resolutions. And the only reason why I would maybe want to use sprites instead of images on the canvas is maybe if I want to add some particles. But for now we'll use images and I'm sure it's going to be fine. Okay, so right click on the main camera, go into UI and add a image. Double click on the canvas to zoom out on it and rename the image to background and I'll put my background sprites and make it a bit bigger and scale it to the canvas. Also before we put too much stuff on the canvas let's go on the canvas itself, go into canvas scaler and scale with screen size. I'll set the reference resolution to 1920 by 1080 and that way we're going to make sure that no matter what resolution the person using our game has everything stays the same size. So here I'll actually make my background a bit bigger than the canvas and that's in case someone has a very wide screen, let's say on a phone with the notch enabled and all that stuff. It can maybe sometimes reach a little bit further on one side. Okay so I guess I'll start adding the buttons so we can switch between the different panels. I'll go on my canvas, right click, UI and then button. I'll move it to the top left right here, make it about this size. I'll put in the square button sprite and set the anchor to the top left. I'll rename it to wallet because that's the button that's going to trigger. And I'll set the text to wallet and set it quite a bit bigger, let's say 60. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'll set it to white. Actually, I'll set it to 80. Yep, that's good. Now I'll just duplicate it and move it down with the move tool. They are a bit too big to fit four wide, so I'll just reduce their height a little bit and that should be enough. Okay, now I'll rename them and change the text. Now I'll start creating some menus so we can switch between them. So the way I like to do it is when we click a button, I enable a menu and when I click another one, it disables all the other ones. So let's say I click wallet, it would enable the wallet menu and disable the trade power and settings menu. And the way I do this menu is simply by creating an empty game object and calling it something like wallet menu. And I put all my wallet stuff into it. So when I click something else than wallet, I just disable that and everything disappears. So here I'll do UI text and I'll do for example money $100. I'll put the text at the full width but I'll set the alignment to the middle so if you get more money it starts moving a little bit but it stays in the middle. And I will also anchor it at the top middle. Now I'll go into my scene, create an empty game object and just call it game. I'll go into my assets, create a folder and call it scripts. I'll create a new c -sharp script and call it game and this will handle all the game mechanics. I will also create a new c -sharp script and call it player data. So the player data here doesn't need to use Unity Engine and it doesn't need to be a mono behavior. And for now all I'll put inside is a public int dollars and I will change that later just to test it. In my game script I will create a public player data uh, player data. And in the start I'll do player data equals to new player data. And here I'll create a 
public player data, my constructor pretty much, and in here I'll do dollars equals to 100. In my game I'll add using Unity Engine.ui, and here I'll do a public text wallet dollars, and here in the start I'll just do wallet dollars text equals to player data dot dollars. And don't forget to do two strings. Now if I save that and I put my game script on my game game object, like this, just add game. I drag in my wallet menu text, which is going to be this money here. And now if I run the game, it should change it right here to 100. Now let's add a bit of formatting. So let's do dollars, dollar sign, and then plus this amount. And there you go, it's showing fine. So now let's put that instead into a function. I'll actually put it at the bottom here. So I'll do private, or actually I'll do public void update wallet. And I'll put the same thing that I put in start here. And here I'll call update wallet. And in the update function here, I'll try doing player data dot dollars plus plus. And then update wallet and it should make our money go up. So this is just to show you kind of the script function, how it works. And as you can see, it goes up once every frame. The biggest issue that we have right now is that we use ints. Of course, we could change it to something like float and have decimals using this. But the problem is not so much to have decimals, but rather that if we want to have like millions and billions and trillions, like really big numbers, floats cannot hold that much. If you put something over, I think it's two billion or something like that in a float, it will overflow. So instead we need to create some class that can hold big numbers. And we need to do it before doing anything else in the game because otherwise we will have to change everything to fit our new big numbers. I think we're going to have to do this in the next episode because it's going to take a lot of time. So thanks for watching this part 1. I hope that wasn't too boring because we didn't do much. But trust me, if you follow you'll get a cool game in the end. And you might also learn a few things. You can also check out my other Unity tutorials if you're interested. And subscribe if you want to see the rest of the series.